What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome everybody to another edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by The Record and NorthJersey.com. I'm your host, Art Stapleton, and game week is almost over. Just finished up Friday availability in the locker room. The Giants are now about 52, 53 hours from being out there on the field against the Cowboys Sunday night. At MetLife Stadium, 2023 kicks off between two rivals, and we've got a supersized show for you today. Caught up with Jalen Hyatt, the talented rookie wide receiver. This is his second time on the podcast uh, this summer. Hyatt's been great. He's great with the media. So I think you wanted to hear from him. At least that was my take. So I went up to him and got him at his locker. I think he had a lot of good things to say, getting ready for his first NFL game. Then Dexter Lawrence wrote a column on Dexter this week. Had some really good stuff in it from Andre Patterson. uh, And just the idea of where Dexter is coming off of his breakout season, the $90 million, the contract, what he's motivated by this year. Uh, So I think you'll enjoy that interview as well. And then Burt Bainbridge, NorthJersey.com sports betting analyst. We break down Giants-Cowboys and then also look ahead to the Giants this season for entertainment purposes. But if you choose to uh, take part in the betting aspect of it, then you'll have everything you need to know from Bert, and I give some of my opinions as well. Real good conversation. I hope you enjoy that. So before we get into the interviews, I wanted to uh, just kind of give you my keys, my thoughts for Sunday. Uh, I think the Cowboys probably are a little bit overrated uh, Week going into week one. I think they have talented players. There's no question about that. But I think the Cowboys are viewed at a certain level and the Giants are viewed at a lower level by a lot of the national media, and I, I don't think that's the case here. I think the Giants have players here that need to be accounted for. I think the Cowboys need to think about the players that they have. I think on offense, uh, I think Andrew Thomas is going to come into this one with a little bit of a chip. You know, Micah Parsons made that tweet after the Thanksgiving Day game when Andrew was playing clearly not at 100%. He was sick, and there were no excuses, but Parsons had a big game and actually tweeted afterwards something to the effect of, he's supposed to be really good. I stayed on him all game. So I think Thomas comes into this weekend looking to to remind people that that game was an anomaly. Uh, I think you're looking at Darren Waller, Saquon Barkley, guys who can break this game open. I think there has to be some apprehension on the Cowboys part when it comes to Jalen Hyatt and what his speed is going to do uh, for this offense. And then Daniel Jones. I really think that Daniel Jones, if he comes out and plays a clean game, I think he's going to be able to make some plays here against the Cowboys. Cowboys have a very good defense. They need to be, Giants need to be very aware of the edge rushers on the Cowboys. Obviously, Demarcus Lawrence had three sacks in the Week 3 game last year. I know everybody keeps saying that Evan Neal gave up all three sacks. That's not true. Uh, If he was charged with two of those sacks, I'd say that's probably more appropriate. I think the third one, uh, Daniel Bellinger at tight end, kind of missed a chip, was supposed to get him uh, coming around, and he ended up getting a sack. Uh, that a lot of people attribute to Evan Neal, but that was not an Evan Neal play. Um, So, you know, I I think you have to be aware you're not going to, you're going to challenge Trayvon Diggs, but I don't think you you can 
put a ball in harm's way around him, he's going to be hunting that ball. So you need to do some things game plan wise to be able to maybe take advantage of his aggressiveness a little bit. And when you have the speed that the Giants have, uh, I think maybe you can do that. And, you know, look, I think the Giants have improved in certain areas. The biggest will likely be the run defense, bringing in Raheem Nunez Roches, Nacho, and Ashawn Robinson to spell Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence, I think is a huge factor here. Uh, I also think that the crowd will be a big factor. You know, the Giants had the white out last year in week three. They'll have a blue out on Sunday. It'll be interesting to see what the atmosphere is like. But look, let's not forget, last year the atmosphere early on in the season, they were coming off a woeful season. They had fired their third head coach in a six-year span. The Giants, yes, they had come out of the gates and won their first two games. But this year... They come into this game coming off of nine wins in the regular season, another playoff win. Yes, the season came to a screeching halt against Philly, but there's a lot of optimism from the Giants fan base. I think you're going to see that kind of manifest itself on Sunday night. I will be surprised if the Cowboys overrun MetLife Stadium, uh, the fans anyway, which they have done many times over. I think the Giants fans are going to be fired up for Sunday night, uh, and it'll be interesting. That's that's all I'll say. I'll say I think it's going to be interesting, um, and one of those guys that are going to make things interesting, I think, is the third-round rookie, Jalen Hyatt, second time on All In with Art Stapleton, but let's get to my interview with Jalen at his locker after Friday's practice. So, uh, for... You get within 48 hours or so. What What's your mindset like this week? What's it been like? Have you felt the difference in a game week versus what was going on in yeah, preseason? Yeah, um, I mean, I think for us, uh, you know, we always, even in preseason, you know, how we were game planning, you know, we take everything seriously up here. Um, but it definitely been different, you know, because it's a season opener. Uh, we're at home. Uh, going against the Cowboys, um, it's gonna be my first my first experience, so it's gonna be fun. I can't wait. Do you do you feel it now? I mean, when you get this close, I mean, you've been yeah. anticipating yeah, it. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, now especially with draft process and uh, just everything that you have to do as a rook, rookie before you play your first game. You know, it's a lot of stuff. But now to actually, you know, be two days away and you know ready to go uh, to, to play the Cowboys, I just can't wait. And, and, and yeah, I know you've been. Obviously, listen to the veterans in your room a lot. Dave's told us this morning that you know he had the captains kind of talk to the rookies this week, telling you what to expect. What was that like from you? What did, what did you take from that? Yeah, it was definitely a good good talk. Um, you know, I had all the captains in there, uh, and just talking about their experiences as a rookie. Um, you know, their 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 experiences uh, in their first game when they played. You know, as a rookie, um, and you know, when you hear from guys that uh, the leaders on our team that has experience that you know has done it in the league. Uh, you know, it makes it makes us like ma- makes us rookies uh, makes it easier for us. You know, and knowing that they went through it too. So, but at the same time, you know, uh, we're we're ready. You know, uh, I feel like we we have a great rookie class. We're all close, um, and we just can't wait to go out there and play. I know. Uh, you know, they always say you don't know, forget your first. You remember your first college game and what that was like, and how did you do in your first college game? Yeah, I um I do remember my first college game a little bit. Um, uh, I know we were uh, we were home. Um, you know, for me, it was just seeing Neyland's, you know, seeing it packed. Um, but you know, at the same time, I kind of forget. I, I kind of forget it too. Um, but this one is something I won't forget. Um, you know, this this right here was my dream to come up here and you know play in the NFL and play for an organization like the Giants. So um, I, I won't, definitely won't forget my first game. You walked into this building back in May and yeah. said, "I'm going to learn everything I can and I'm going to get better at being a complete receiver." How much better is Jalen Hyatt today than what you were when you walked in here? And then I would imagine the second part of that is how much more can you improve to get to where you are today? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, since day one, you know, when I came up here for rookie minicamp um, to now being, you know, two days away from the regular season, um, for me, I think the biggest thing was getting comfortable. Um, learning the playbook is definitely the biggest thing. 
and you know having more confidence you know i have more confidence now dj you know he trusted me uh, we got our leaders in the room that trusted me so for me that's really what i want to do you know throughout training camp throughout rookie uh Rookie mini camp throughout OTAs. I just wanted to gain trust, you know, from Daniel. Um, be there whenever he needs me to be there. Watch film with him. Whatever it is that we can uh, get our connection down, um, because it, it matters in the game. Uh, but I, you know, from from day one you know, when I got here to now, uh, you know, being here, it, it definitely been a difference for me. And I just can't wait to go out there and show that. How cool is it to be in between the longest tenured giant and Sterling? And then your quarterback next to you. I know it was a move you made, you know, last week. But what's that been like for you? You kind of feel like you're a sponge between the two of these guys. Yeah, you know, I just want to be with leaders. Uh, um, you know, not only that, I look up to these yeah. guys. I uh, look up to DJ. Yeah, look up sir. to Chef. Uh, this guy's is always on me. You know, making sure I'm doing the right things, making sure that uh, you know I'm doing what I need to do. In, uh, you know, in the building, um, and that's what these two guys for, uh, do for me. So. Just for me to be here, uh, it shows a lot of respect uh, for them and for me uh, to, to just be right beside them, you know, and be locker buddies. Uh, but at the same time, I'm glad I'm here with them because, you know, I look up to them and uh, they make sure I, I, I do what I got to do. I know I wasn't there with you the other day when people were asking you about 13, but uh, does it feel right now that you've had it on for about a week? Yeah, it definitely feels right now. Uh, I love low numbers. Uh, that's really what I wanted. Uh, I feel, feel good and it looks good feel good um, so I can't wait to go out there and, and play did I hear right that originally if you had your choice you would have taken 11 oh yeah definitely definitely 11 is my favorite number um, definitely would have took 11 for sure no no ideas of reaching out to Phil Sims and asking him <laughs> you know we might we might see we might see um, you know I'd probably get that another year or, or two um yeah, we might see about that one. We're going to try to get that number back open again. Are you a guy that envisions what you'll do on Sunday night? Are you you, you a guy who likes to think about yeah, yeah, definitely, plays you're going to run? I definitely do that. I, I'm, I'm a heavy, heavy, heavy believer in that. Um, you know, putting it in the universe and uh, just, you know, saying and I'm, I'm very big on that. So I definitely visualize making plays. Uh, I always visualize making plays since I was a kid. So um, definitely will visualize making plays, being out there, you know, being out there with the guys um, and doing what I have to do. Everything you've had to this point, do you still do you still have those butterflies on, on Sunday night that it's something new? Even though you've been in the stadium, you've had your first game, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I think that's one thing that University of Tennessee kind of got me prepared for, you know, all the big games, uh, the big environments, 100K sold out, uh, you know, stadiums, you know, when we're playing. I think they, uh, they, you know, just because of that experience that I you know, experienced in Tennessee, I think kind of helps to, you know, when we do get in big games, how it is against the Cowboys and really all the games that we play. But, uh, but I'm ready for the moment. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say I won't be nervous or antic. I definitely will, but at the same time, I, you know, I deserve to be here, um, and I just can't wait to do what I do. Thanks, man. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. So there you have it, the words of Jalen Hyatt, the new number 13 with the Giants. And, uh, you know, look, there's going to be a lot of attention on Jalen Hyatt on Sunday night. I've said it before. I think he's going to be a guy who is not necessarily getting a heavy dose of targets, at least not early on in the season, but I think he's the guy that can make you pay with two or three targets in a game. Uh, and I think that's what the Giants will do. How the Giants build their offense around certain weapons and the intention that teams pay to those weapons will be uh, something to really keep an eye on. How do teams defend Waller? How the teams defend Saquon? And then obviously, how do teams defend Hyatt and that vertical speed possibility? Uh, they could really put teams in a bind uh, if those players are all on the field at the same time. So, arguably, the MVP of last season for the Giants was Dexter Lawrence. Uh, and I caught up with Dex at his locker earlier this week. So I hope you enjoy our interview now. It's a very interesting season for Dexter coming off of a breakout year. And my question to many people, and I ended up writing that column on NorthJersey.com, so check that out, is how high is the ceiling for Dexter Lawrence after last year? And the answer I got there is no ceiling. That was from Andre Patterson, who knows his share of great players. And I think uh, you'll enjoy listening to Dex here uh, in our interview at his locker. 
I know you've done a lot of reflection that you're probably tired of reflecting and want to look forward. What's this like for you a year later, knowing everything you were able to accomplish a year ago? Um, I think it's just just remembering how I, how I did it, and um, you know, bringing those same habits to this year, um, feeling the same things this year. Uh, you know, knowing what built gave me all that confidence. Um, just you know, those type of habits, those things that you know you try to leech on to. You know, to be consistent. Did you? I mean, uh, looking back, but just in terms of mindset, everything you laid out for yourself a year ago, could you have imagined it turning out the way you did, or is it because you imagined it and went after it that it actually turned out that way? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a, I'm a live in the moment type of guy. Um, you know, I try to control what I control, and that's the present. So, you know, every day I just go out and work. Um, and what comes with that, you know, I'm going to be happy with because I know, you know, what I prepared for it to do. So, you know, I, I mean, that's just my mindset on a lot of things. So I don't I don't get overwhelmed with, you know, thinking about the future or thinking about the past. I, I've said to some people, and again, I don't know if I'm on, you know, on point or not, but I think to the changes that were made to this coaching staff and Dre coming in and Brian Cox coming in and mm-hmm. you being willing to do the things you need to do to Mm -hmm. get to where you want it to be. Yeah. Has there ever been a moment you thought to yourself where you'd be if those guys weren't here and where... Um... You know, uh, you know they they came in and, and brought a different type of mindset to the defense, and um, you know I got a ton of respect for them. Um, you know, and they gave us opportunities to showcase who we are, and they coached us up the right way. Um, so you know, I mean, I, I think you know everything is bound to happen when it's bound to happen. Uh, well, I, I mean, I can't, I can't really, I can't really say that. It's really more of a question for me to answer. Than you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so let's talk, let's talk this season. I mean, I, I, this, this summer has kind of seemed like a, a slow burn for you guys, getting ready to go, um, getting on the field this week, and actually getting going in a game week. Does mm-hmm. it feel like it, it comes back very quickly? That uh, it definitely does. Uh, even yesterday when we came in, um, you know, just to walk through this whole week, you know. Just just, just feel like game week and um, you know how we you know everything we bring over from camp just the preparation of every day you know going to attack every day I think that just flows into you know to this week and then like throughout the season I think it is uphold how does this team stay hungry um I just say this it's not settling and playing for the guys next to you I mean I'm 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 a very unselfish player, you know. I I want to play well, so you know I, I'm doing well by my doing good by my teammates, and um, you know they that's what they expect from me, and you know that's what I want to do for them, and you know you know I want the same thing in return, you know I'm a kind of lead by example type of thing, and you know it's just my mindset. Yep. People say you know you don't change. You, I know you're gonna say you, you don't change, and I don't think you changed. But people around you change when you when you earn a big contract and you play the way you did. Have you noticed that? And how have you handled the idea of? And I don't even mean people in this locker yeah. room, but people view you differently now. You're on the commercial yeah. for for the league to yeah. start the year. Um, I don't know. I, I keep my circle tight, so. Um, I don't, I don't know, you know, how other people will act towards me. Um, you know, in the locker room, I'm, I'm still sexy Dexy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not the commercial Dexy. You know what I mean? So, I'm just, you know, happy to have teammates, you know, like this to uh, you know, keep me grounded and, you know, support me in the same time. Was that fun? That uh, well, I did shoot? enjoy that. Yeah, that was cool. What was the bet? What was the fun part about it? Is it just uh, being with some of the other guys that really? Is? I was just say, I just say, just being in that setting of a commercial. You know, seeing how it works, see how it operates. You know, saying your line, and you know, you see yourself on TV, and you, you know, you feel different than you see yourself on TV. So it was cool. Uh, when you came out this summer, and you you had and you said the thing about um, the idea of how this team isn't isn't a building team anymore. It's essentially about doing a team. How much has that weighed on you, and how much have you communicated that to guys in this? Uh, I think I think we all heard that. Everyone heard that, and we all on the same page. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, it's been four years talking about that, and um, you know, 
we had a winning season last year. We just got to keep carrying on, you know, know, know what we did and do better type of thing. And I think everybody has the same mindset of we, we're going to win. We're trying to win. And um, when we all agree on that and all see the same picture, you know, we go, go together with our confidence on the field. I asked Andre Patterson this, and I'll ask you. Is there a ceiling to what Dexter Lawrence or the player Dexter Lawrence can be? Um, I wouldn't say so. I, I missed a, a lot of plays last year that, you know, could have, you know, whatever. But, you know, it's all in timing. And, you know, I'm excited to, you know, start over and improve myself on every Sunday, Monday, Thursday that we play. Has that always been you? Has that always been your mindset? I, I, think, that- I think I think it has. Um, just, you know, just being around the right people in, in school, you know, in high school, good coaches, it's always told me to work, just keep working and, and work in the present. You know, yesterday plays can't make be today's plays. You know what I mean? And that's how you want to be remembered. Uh, Dallas comes here Sunday night. I know you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, a team that you, you know, you guys, we know the history, we know what's gone on, but as far as the in the moment thing, are you guys ready for a moment like this to, to play um, I a think, division team? And yeah, I think we're ready for whatever it brings. Um, you know, we've been preparing the right way through camp, and, you know, it's just now we just uh, get to showcase our work. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks to Dexter Lawrence, uh, and you know, a crowd was coming just as we were finishing our interview. So uh, it was kind of funny to see Dex kind of shake his head, knowing that look, this is his responsibility. He's been in his locker every day this week. You're two time captain uh, and one of the best players, not only on the Giants but in the league. Uh, you that comes with a responsibility. So I give I give Dex a lot of credit uh, for doing that. So I appreciate him. Now. Let's go to my interview with Burt Bainbridge. Uh, I think you'll find things interesting. Just the perception of the Giants is a really big thing, not only league-wide, but from an odds-making perspective. So here's my interview with Burt. All right, joining me now, Burt Bainbridge, sports betting analyst for NorthJersey.com. My guy, Burt, back and better than ever. And uh, appreciate you joining me, getting ready for... uh, you know, what should be a good season here in New York, New Jersey football with the Giants and Jets. How you doing, Bert? Awesome, Art. Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on again. I can't wait. I, you know, I hope it's going to be a fun and entertaining season just like it was last year, especially for the Giants. So um, just glad to get the season underway like it did last night. So I'm ready. All right. Yeah, last night, a little bit of a uh-huh. surprise. I didn't see what you had. Did you have the Lions? Yeah, no, I mean, if that was any indication of how the season's going to start, I mean, we're we're in for a good one this year. But no, I, I thought the Chiefs would maybe win by a field goal or so. I did not see, you know, how much they struggled, you know, without Kelsey last night in the passing game and whatnot. That was, you know, that was that was tough to see if you were a Chiefs fan. But, man, these Lions, who knows? Maybe they're – maybe the hype is real and you should buy it now for them to win the division. But, you know, Kirk crazy, absolute – that's uh, start to the season so far on that opening night. Yeah, we we spent a week in Detroit, uh, or at least the outskirts of Detroit, with the Lions and the Giants had joint practices back in August, and uh, two evenly matched teams. So it's interesting to see the Lions win a game like that. Uh, you know, it gives a little bit more confidence for the Giants coming in here on on Sunday night. Tell me the odds, Bert. What do you like, and uh, how do you size this Giants Cowboys game up? Yeah, so, I mean, as we start right here, I mean, you know, the the betting market, <laughs> they're, they're not taking really anything uh, away from the Giants' good the season last year. You know, they start week one, you know, they are against the Cowboys, you know, who, have, who we both know have had their number in, you know, the past five or six years. It's been tough sledding against them. But, you know, the Giants, I mean, just as we sit here opening week, Sunday night football at home, you know, behind the... You know, MetLife Stadium, the Giants, uh, faithful, just rocking. The, you know, they're three and a half point underdogs uh, at home on Sunday night. So, you know, I even I am I you know even though I'm not I don't even want to be a little biased here, but getting getting three and a half points as a home underdog in a divisional matchup to start the season. I mean, I wonder what your takeaway is, but I I, I think I got to lean Giants here, especially with some books have the number at three and a half. I think that's. That's where, that's where you got to go with this one because, I mean, I you know, usually these games are close, a field goal, you know, definitely less than a touchdown uh, outcome in this one. So I think the Giants getting three and a half at home in week one 
you know, that's just too good to pass up in my mind. Yeah, timing timing for this game is obviously a big deal. You know, you you see the Giants and Cowboys when they play later in the season. If they're you, you know, if they're not evenly matched, you know, Cowboys fans will overrun MetLife Stadium. Uh, I don't expect that on Sunday. I think there will be Cowboy fans, obviously, but I think the Giants have stirred up enough momentum uh, within their fan base that. Uh, this is going to be, I mean, if it's 75-25, that's probably conservative, saying Giants fans, the Cowboy fans. Uh, you remember last year in week three, they had the whiteout at MetLife, and that scene w- was incredible. Uh, and, you know, people forget. I mean, the perception, look, the Giants really weren't in any of the Eagle games, the three games, the playoff game, and then obviously the second game, that was the last game of the season, the Giants didn't play any starters. But with the Cowboys, they were both one-score games, and here at MetLife when they played, you know, Saquon scores that touchdown in the third quarter, and the Giants had the lead. You know, so I know it's Cooper Rush and not Dak Prescott, but I think the Giants have to have some confidence going in against the Cowboys. Now, how much do you think, Bert, uh, you know, the numbers are the numbers. Dak Prescott, as a rookie quarterback, lost twice to the Giants in 2016. The only Giant that was on that team that year was Sterling Shepard. And since then, Dak Prescott has won 10 straight starts against the Giants. When you look at your odds, how much do you think history plays a factor, uh, at least for you? I, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Mm-hmm. What do you think in terms of the historical aspect of the number that the, the Cowboys have had on the Giants? Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely think that, you know, that obviously plays a role in it and, it, and is, you know, somewhat of a factor for sure. But I, I don't think it's always telling of what what can or should happen because you know sometimes you know especially in these divisional matchups they are one-sided for a long time and then maybe it's you know it flips or reverses and or maybe they just start splitting uh, every year but you know i think it is somewhat somewhat of a factor but i mean i wouldn't you know i don't think it's the all tell all be also you know it, it it is a little you know how how much the cowboys have you know owned this matchup since you know after prescott's rookie year like you mentioned you know it is you know, it is somewhat of a side, but I don't think it's everything, and especially with how this Giants team is built and, you know, where they are health-wise right now. And like you said, the start of the year, you know, maybe be a little different if this was, you know, when they play later in the season, you know, it could be a different number in how the teams are performing. But, no, I mean, especially, you know, and even if we're just looking at, like, future odds, too, I mean, it's just even with how well, like, the Giants played last year, I would think maybe they would have some, you know, better numbers, like, with their over-under win total or right. like their uh, odds to win a division. Because right now, you know, if you're, depending on what uh, book you're looking at, I mean, the Giants are still way behind, you know, behind the Eagles and Cowboys who are both the, you know, Eagles are the slight favorites to win the division. But the Giants are all the way down, depending what number you're looking at. You know, you're looking at 7-1, to 8-1. to one, And even on, like, uh, DraftKings Sportsbook right now, they're plus 900, you know. So they're 9-1 to one to win the division. I mean, you know, you never say never. But to be that low after the season that they had, and, you know, maybe if Philly takes a step back or injuries, you know, you never know. But to get the Giants that low of a number is uh, – it's pretty shocking to me. So, yeah, like I, like I said, I think future has somewhat of a – so it's somewhat of a sign, but I don't think it's always the tell-all, be all factor of it. You know, it's funny. You mentioned the division. The odds are what they are. I mean, I do think after going 0-5 against Philly and Dallas last year, uh, mm-hmm. obviously the Giants are sitting there at, you know, in third place. I mean, Washington coming up from behind. I mean, I think Giants should have won both of those games last year. That right. tie they kind of gave to Washington. It felt like a loss for, for the Giants and a, and a win for, for Washington. Um, but, you know, my, my thing – I don't know what you feel. I think if you're betting the Giants to win Sunday night, then you should put some money down on the Giants to win the division because the number, I think if the Giants come out and beat the Cowboys on Sunday night, Monday morning, the odds are going to to drop. I think, uh, you know, because now all of a sudden that's how influential one division game can be, especially a team that hasn't beaten the other opponent in so long. Uh, What do you think about that? And do you see, you know, divisional odds kind of changing that much? Or because the Eagles are such an overwhelming favorite, especially over the Giants, that those divisional odds maybe don't work as much or don't change as much because you still have the Eagles who the Giants don't see until Christmas. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I think those numbers that I think you're definitely spot on there because, you know, like I said, we're at, you know, eight to one or nine to one at certain books. But like, you know, like like we said, if they if they come out strong in week one and have, a, you know, and, and win in uh, win in the Meadowlands on Sunday night and, you know, let's say the Eagles struggle in Foxborough let's, or even say the Patriots pull off the upset there uh, on Sunday afternoon, you know, these numbers are going to look a lot different. So I, I think if you do believe the Giants, not, I would not only say to um, – bet them division wise but also like if we want to just go to win totals real quick i mean they, they're sitting right now at you know every book's got them at seven at seven and a half wins so i think if they start strong like that that um i would also take their over win total too because i think that could change as well um if they start off strong because then you know we look at week two they're in arizona against the cardinals and you would think hopefully that's a you would think that's a win going there so if you start the season to say hypothetically two and oh i mean i think if you're if you believe that's the case of what's going to happen for the Giants, the division I would definitely take a look at right now and definitely also on their over-under win total of 7.5, which is, you know, at, at, on DraftKings is at plus 100, so even money. So that's a really great value, especially if they start 2-0. and Let's have some fun with some prop bets before I let you go, before we kick into the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a couple prop bets that you like this weekend? Yeah, so um, I looked at a couple of uh, spread. I, l- I looked at mostly spreads so far to start this week, and one of my uh, go tos was definitely the Giants there at plus three and a half. Um, but also, what, one of my favorite bets um, just overall in the NFL this week has to be uh, we we had the, the Browns and Bengals game in Week One, and I definitely think uh, Nick Chubb he had a rushing line of only seventy three and a half yards, and I and I think that's a that's a must bet because it, it, there's potentially a factor for weather in, uh, in Cleveland this weekend. So I think at home as home underdogs, you know, Joe Burrow, obviously he just signed a massive extension uh, yesterday. So, you know, and, and he says he's fine coming off that calf injury he suffered earlier in the offseason says he's good to go when he's ready. But I, I think coming in as home at, at home as two and a half point underdogs for the uh, Browns there and with Nick Chubb and he's, he hit that line in 13 of, uh, he went over that number in four, 13 of uh, 17 games last year. I, I think Nick Chubb to get over that total and go for at least 80 yards is almost like a like a just smash play for me. I think that's my, probably my favorite player prop for this weekend. Do you have uh, have a player prop for the Giants Cowboys game? Yeah, so I, I'll start you one actually. If we want to look season long, since you know we're we're still waiting for this, since we're uh, the season's about to get underway, and these numbers like we've mentioned could should change a lot and whatnot. I think for the Giants, if we're if we want to look season long real quick, I think my favorite one, and you can tell me how you feel about this right now, Darren Wall Darren Waller, obviously the Giants big addition. He's at over uh, under his four and a half touchdowns this year. And, and I think he's honestly gonna hit, <laughs> hit that over. And you can get that at plus what you can get that, you know, depending what sports book you use, but like on DraftKings or FanDuel, it's at plus one ten or minus one oh two. So I think those I think the, that number is uh, Kind of, you know, kind of lower than I thought it was going to be. Maybe like, you know, close to the five and a half or even six and a half. Obviously, health has been an issue for him the past couple of years. After he broke out, I believe in the COVID in 2019, 2020 uh, COVID season, he he really stepped out and had like I think nine or ten touchdowns that season. But to say that four and a half with how well you know we saw that limited action they played in the preseason against the Panthers, I. I think four and a half is pretty low, especially at the at the price you can get it of uh, you know better than even money at plus one ten. I, I think that's a match play. If he stays healthy, I think he's you know I you know, I would say probably in the seven to nine touchdown range with how him and Daniel Jones have been on have had that connection so far. So I, I'm going to say I would definitely take that over if we're looking future long for the Giants. Agree with you that that's a shockingly no low number yeah. for me for for Waller, especially you got to consider the offense too, right and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think they're going to want to throw more, but I do think that with Brian Dable and Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, they both like to use 12 personnel and even 13 personnel with multiple tight ends on the field. So I think Waller will not only serve as a big presence, I think he'll also serve as a decoy. So I got one for you. If people like anytime touchdowns, I'm betting Daniel Bellinger every week. I'm not officially betting him, but I, I think Daniel, Be- Daniel Bellinger to score uh, we saw him score in the preseason game against Carolina. Uh, I think that with the attention in the red zone, I think the Giants are going to want to use their tight ends in the red zone. You can almost throw Lawrence Cager in there. So I think as good as Waller is going to be, and I, I'm surprised it's at four and a half. Like like I said, um, I, I would if you if you're someone who likes the anytime touchdowns, I think Bellinger is going to be somebody to look at every week. Uh, just because of the attention that Waller is going to draw 
uh, down there. Uh, one more for you, Bert, and then I'll let you go. Uh, in terms of Saquon, uh, season long, do you have anything on him? And I'm just curious what what the odds makers see as far as you know over unders for him uh, rushing and then even receiving or, or touchdowns. Anything on that? Yes, I mean obviously uh, I could pull up uh, I could pull up Saquon's stats real quick, but you know if, with how well he's been doing, you know it's going to be probably at least a thousand yards and stuff. Something if he's going to stay healthy, I, I believe if I looked earlier in the year, he's around eleven hundred to twelve hundred rushing yards. Gotcha. Um, um, on the season, but um, yeah, no, I was actually looking at him. I mean, I did in, my, in one of my columns leading up to the season, I wrote about my MVPs, my offensive player of the year, and I, I almost thought about putting Saquon there because I think if you know, like obviously he didn't reach he didn't reach the uh, long term contract with the Giants this offseason. Obviously, they just agreed to that new one year deal. But I mean, if he you know if he's looking to prove it and get that money, I think he can you know really have a great year. And um, one number when I was looking at Saquon. Um, even though it was my official pick, but forty to one to win offensive play of the year. If he if he has a really great season and you know earns what could be a really big contract coming up uh, after the season, I think at forty to one, I think he's a great value there uh, to win offensive player of the year if he really breaks out and you know has similar to his type of rookie type of season numbers where he had, you know he caught a bunch of balls, he was good on the ground. So yeah, so that, if I'm looking at Saquon, one of my future bets, I, I think if I had to go route, it would be maybe just to put a little money on him to win a offensive play of the year all the way down at 40 to one. I think that's uh, wow, that's tremendous value. Yeah, that is uh, those odds are 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 very low in terms of in what you what Saquon can be, what the value he can be on this team. I think there is that unknown factor from the summer because he didn't do much in the preseason and, you know, was out here for every practice, but, you know, they're not doing their run game and pass game, uh, you know, and letting him loose. So that'll be very interesting. Bert Bainbridge, as always, we'll try to catch up with you uh, as often as possible this season, and I appreciate you joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, having me again. All right. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it nowadays, I'm at, spell it uh, Bert underscore Bainbridge. And if you want to see any of my content on uh, NorthJersey.com, you just type in uh, uh, Albert or Bainbridge in the search bar and all my, uh, all my, all my info will be there for everything NFL wise betting and any type of breaking news that happens. So, you know, follow me there on Twitter at Bird underscore Bainbridge or just go to NorthJersey.com and just type in my name and you'll see all the content I'll be uh, releasing this season. Bert, as, a pl- as always, a pleasure, and we'll be talking soon. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me again, Art. Can't wait, can't wait to reach out. There. Can't wait to connect during the season. I appreciate it. All right, so that was Bert Bainbridge, uh, our guy at NorthJersey.com, sports betting analyst. Uh, as it seems, the odd makers are not believing in the Giants yet. That could certainly change on Sunday night. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's shows. Uh, we had obviously Dexter Lawrence uh, and every player that was able to, to join me, Evan Neal. Uh, we had the rookies, Tay Banks, Trey Hawkins, even going back to last week, Wondell Robinson. Uh, and we'll keep doing that all season. We're going to try to have a video sit down next week uh, with a couple players, but I'll, uh, I'll keep that under wraps till we figure it out. Uh, but again, thanks for always being all in. Make sure you check out all my coverage at NorthJersey.com. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this podcast, to the NorthJersey.com, and to our newsletter, NorthJersey.com slash all in. I will be there on that life on Sunday relatively early so make sure you follow me on twitter slash x and uh ready to kick off the 2023 season year two for brian dable and joe shane it's going to be very interesting to see how this team takes that step forward uh, i think which which a lot of us expect at least those who are close to this team and see the talent infusion that they've had in key areas Ultimately, it's going to come down to Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Darren Waller, Andrew Thomas, Evan Neal, this offensive line, and then defensively, can they put pressure on the quarterback? Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Aziz Ojolari. Uh, if that defensive front can be as good as they think they can be, 
Uh, I think this defense will take a huge jump forward, uh, and there will be less pressure on the rookies on the back, uh, and then we'll see where Isaiah Simmons fits in all of that uh, in terms of being a, a Swiss Army knife of sorts for Wink Martindale. So, again, thank you for being all in. We're all in. We'll catch up with you on Sunday. Win or lose, post game. Make sure you check out your favorite podcast platforms. All in with Art Stapleton. We're there for you each and every day.